This week has been a, a real peak in the pandemic because this week we've had 1,000, I'm sorry, 10,256 new cases confirmed this week and 103 Oklahomans have lost their life from COVID-19 this week alone. Um, both the three-day the, uh, three and the seven-day rolling averages are going up. Right now we're seeing on average 1,465 new cases being confirmed on a daily basis in Oklahoma. Of course, Oklahoma and Tulsa County have the most cases. If you just look at Oklahoma County, there have been more than 800 newly confirmed cases in the past two days. But when you look at the data for the state from a population perspective, many of our rural counties still have case rates, incidence rates that are higher than our most urban uh, counties in the state. And then of course, uh, Dr. Mantra is gonna talk more about hospitalizations, but in Oklahoma for the past three days, we've had more than a thousand patients in the hospital each day. Um, um, and we've had consistently more than 300 Oklahomans in the hospital in the intensive care unit. So because of that, we know that the mortality rate from COVID-19, particularly when you're sick enough to be hospitalized and in an ICU is very high and that we're going to see more deaths in our state. And to that point, several of you had asked me in the past about the Institute for Health, Health Metrics and Evaluation because several weeks ago they had predicted that Oklahoma would have uh, up to 1,450 deaths by Thanksgiving we're going to have that many deaths by next week. And in fact, if you look at their most recent projections, they're projecting that there'll be 1,795 deaths in Oklahoma by Thanksgiving day. So tier three means that on a three day process, we have uh, in our community, hospitals have an average of more than 20% of their patients being admitted with, with the virus, being COVID positive. Um, what it, how it affects the, the rural communities and the local community amongst ourselves is trying to figure out how do we put patients in the right, patients in the right place. Not all of our hospitals have the same capabilities from a medical care surgical standpoint or from an ICU standpoint. And so we try to put patients where they're best taken care of with the type of care that they need. Uh, at times we're able to transfer patients of lower acuity with less uh, significant symptoms and, and uh, illness to facilities that can take care of them. And at the same time, those that become critically ill get transferred to institutions like ours at OU Health where we can take care of, of all the critical care patients. So there is a, a great uh, collaboration amongst all the hospitals in the region, both rural and, and local. It's a little bit different. What we're currently doing is looking at um, the hospital and their capacities, whether or not we can still take patients or not. Um, the idea is that we look at uh, patients who are absolutely going to need critical care or have a prolonged length of stay and for whom <coughs> their um, putting off of the surgery is in no way going to impact their uh, outcome. Uh, if we prolong it for six to eight weeks. And so that's probably the, the group that we look at first. There are other groups um, who, who, although we call it elective, need operative procedures done to try to prevent problems later that are outpatients and can come in and, and be done and go home and not impact our, our hospital care. So it's those higher acuity patients that we know that will need ICU beds that we're looking at to determine whether or not uh, we can hold off on those type of surgical procedures. Well, I think all of us in healthcare and public health are concerned about uh, the upcoming holiday seasons with uh, traditions like Thanksgiving, Christmas, and others uh, that happen this time of year. If you bring people into your home who don't live with you, you increase your chance of getting the infection. Studies have shown that if you're in a household with somebody who's infected, you have a 40 to 60% chance of getting the infection yourself. Many families who come together are multi-generational with kids all the way to grandparents and that increases the risk to the older people because they're the ones who are going to have severe disease. And then finally, just remember that, um, that in households, most people don't wear masks. Um, so I'm strongly encouraging if, if the weather is nice and sometimes it is in Oklahoma, do those activities outdoors if possible, separate, wear a mask when you're not eating uh, and you can reduce some of the risk of transmission. But all of us are concerned that we could see additional peaks 
because of these indoor events, family gatherings, where you bring people together uh, without masks.